Hello Cheapskaters, I'm Kath Armstrong, creator of the Cheapskates Club, where our goal is to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing. If this is your first time visiting our channel, welcome. And if it's not, welcome back. If you're not already subscribed to our channel, please hit that subscribe button. It helps our channel grow, but it helps you too, because you'll be notified every time we put up a new video or every time we go live last week was my first foray into a supermarket in a month and to say i was traumatized by what i saw or rather by what i didn't see is no exaggeration now, I've been staying out of the supermarkets during the pantry test month that we've just finished. If there's been um, anything that I wanted for the pantry, it might have been tea on sale or pasta on sale or whatever, I'd ask Thomas to get it for me when he did his shopping or Hannah would pick it up for me when she did hers. Oh, boy, but I went with Tom last week. Now, Thomas had been telling me that the supermarket was in a mess. He was not wrong. If he hadn't warned me, I think I would still be just wandering around in shock. Now, I know that when I posted over on Cheapskate's chatter about this, um, and about what I saw, the comments were pretty mixed. Now, some of you are seeing the same thing. Some of you think I've gone completely nuts. A couple even suggested that I might be fear-mongering and causing panic, and no, I'm not. There were no eggs, no toilet paper, hardly any meat. I'm not sure if that's because there's shortages of meat or there's been panic buying or they're just not putting as much meat out because it's so expensive. Um, to see Scotch fillet advertised as on sale for $48.99 a kilo just about blew my mind. There were not a lot of packaged, packaged veggies, you know, the salads, the soup, veg, etc. in the produce section. Not a lot in the freezer cabinets either. There were plenty of gaps. I think I was so shocked because even at the height of the lockdowns last year, it was not this bad in our supermarkets. Then there's the gaps, plenty of them in general, in the produce section, in the dairy cabinet, on the shelves. You know, and the prices are just stupid really stupid lettuce for twelve dollars ha what a joke steak on sale for 48.99 a kilo is stupid it just is i almost wanted to get the butcher by the year and demand an explanation i wanted to know why it was so expensive i wanted him to justify to me why i should pay that much for scotch fillet now, yes, I know we've had floods and I know we've had droughts and pandemics and I know fuel costs are going up. But frankly, in Australia, that is a stupid price for beef. Look, I'm going to go out on a limb here. I'll go as far as to say it is price gouging, pure and simple. It's taking advantage of the current world craziness all the way down the chain. And I know you may not agree with me and that's fine. But you can't deny that prices are rising and you can't deny that there are shortages. They are happening. And they are only going to get worse. This is really, really concerning. At the very least, prices will rise because the cost of fuel to deliver whatever to the store has gone up to deliver the bread, to deliver the milk, to deliver the meat, the, the vegetables. It has gone up. 
and it won't just affect groceries. Everything that is moved by any form of road transport is going to go up. And that's just one increase on the things that we buy. There will be many increases all along the chain. And we, the consumers, are going to end up paying for them. Some might say it's the cost of living. So I say keep your pantry stocked. It can be done even with rising prices. We've talked about this before. You'll need to change the way you shop. That's not difficult to do. You might need to shop earlier in the day to ensure that you get everything on your list or you might need to go later to get everything on your list or to get markdowns. You might need to go to more than one supermarket to get everything on your list. You might need to change your brands to get everything on your list. You might find that things on your list just don't exist anymore. You might find that things on your list just aren't within your budget even if you need um, even if you do switch to a uh, cheaper brand. So you'll need to look for substitute, substitutes. Two words. Ingredients, folks. Buy ingredients. They're cheaper. And they give you options. Ingredients give you options. Now someone, I'm sorry I've forgotten who, posted on um, over on Cheapskate's chatter that the reject shop currently has pasta, five packs, five 500 gram packs for $3. That's cheap. That's 60 cents per 500 gram pack. And it's Australian made. Pasta's on my forever foods list and it's really versatile. It can be eaten hot, it can be eaten cold. It's easy and it's quick to cook and it goes a long way. Someone else posted that both Coles and Woolworths still have their own brands of tin tomatoes for 60 cents a can. That's cheap. There are cheap groceries to be had. You just need to be prepared to hunt them down. We are now grocery hunters. So look ahead. If you have celebrations coming up, Start planning and preparing for them now. Doesn't matter when they are. Start as early as you can. Start buying what you will need as early as possible. I posted recently the produce haul that Hannah was able to get for me at a greengrocer in her town. The whole lot cost $17. And that will give us vegetables for a few weeks, for at least a month. Now, we might get sick of pumpkin. We might get sick of potatoes. But we'll have them to eat. And they are versatile veggies. There's a lot you can do with pumpkin and there's a lot you can do with potato. Although getting sick of them is another concern. It's called food fatigue. Rising prices will limit what you buy because you're going to be looking for the cheapest foods to feed your family. I would be too, and I probably will be too. But those cheaper foods will be limited. Not only that, they'll be in short supply. So there'll be a small range and they'll be in short supply. And you'll be buying the same things over and over so don't forget, ingredients give you options. Another thing that gives you options is a good recipe book or two. Now, the best ones, in my opinion, are old recipe books. They are worth their weight in gold. In fact, I don't think you could give me gold for some of my old recipe books. They have basic recipes that are tasty, they're easy, they're cheap.
they use ingredients. They will teach you how to turn a few ingredients into a variety of meals so that food fatigue isn't a problem. That gets rid of one problem. Creating a balanced and nutritious diet on a tight budget also means that you need to get creative. If you're not a good cook or you're a bit like me and you find getting dinner on the table a bit of a um, chore, <laughs> creativity in the kitchen can be tricky. So remember the healthy food pyramid and stick to it. Remember your portion control because portion control will be vital. It not only ensures you get the number of serves you're supposed to from each food, but it ensures that you are only eating the kilojoules you need to. We don't need to overeat. We don't need too much. We don't need a full plate. That's a good thing. It'll make us healthier. And being healthier is going to save on medical costs. And that's going to free up money for other things, like uh, perhaps food. Look, there's no doubt grocery prices are rising. And it really is concerning. But we can still stick to our budget and we can still eat well if we put our minds to it. Now, I'm not encouraging anyone to just buy cheap food, whatever you can get at the lowest possible price. I think everyone knows or should by now that most cheap food is just that, cheap. If it's not entirely void of nutrition, at best it's borderline. It's the food that, you know, no health-orientated person would touch. It's the food that dietitians tell you to stay away from. It's the food that your um, family doctor will cringe at when you say you eat it. This is the stuff that, you know, it often features on the first page of the grocery sale flyers, the chips, the soft drinks, the processed meals, the, the processed meats. What we tend to forget is that, most of the healthiest food that we can eat is also the cheapest. If you stock up on in-season fresh fruit and vegetables um, when they're at their peak, you're buying low. They're cheap then. If you can't get fresh, then frozen is the next best option. And often frozen is even cheaper on a per kilo basis than fresh in season. And there's no waste with frozen veggies. Now, by remembering portion control, you can buy better quality um, red meats. You can buy better quality fish. You can buy better quality poultry. And you'll save money too. Whole grains and legumes, beans, they're cheap and good for you. I know someone's going to say, well, my kids don't like them. Get some recipe books and find different ways to prepare them. One of the um, one of my cheats for hiding beans is to whiz them in the food processor so that they look like little bits of mince and then stir them into the mince. So they're not beans. They're little like little granules of mince. I do that with kidney beans. I do it with baked beans, all sorts of beans. Just whiz them in the food processor so they resemble little um, granules of meat. No complaints. If they don't, you know, it could be that when they see the bean, they don't like the bean, so they won't like the dish. If they can't see the bean, they won't know it's in the dish. You may find it could become their favourite. So whole grains and legumes, they're cheap and they're good for you. And they make great meals on their own and they're perfect for using to stretch others. Now, look, there's plenty of um, inexpensive options um, when you look for cheap and healthy. There really is, even with rising prices and having to be flexible with meal planning and shopping, 
you can eat well with the rising prices. They're still concerning, but we know how to get the best bang for our buck and we know how to keep our pantries filled on a budget. If you liked our show, please give us a thumbs up. If you know someone who might benefit from this show or who might benefit from knowing about the Cheapskates Club, please use the share button to send them a link. And before I go, just a reminder, if you're not already subscribed to our channel, click that subscribe button down there below me and then click that little bell and select how often you want to be notified when we go live or upload a new video it helps us helps our channel and it helps youtube but more importantly it helps our channel to be well you know recognized more easily and the more easily we are recognised and the more easy it is to find us, the easier it is to spread the message that it's not only um, okay to live debt-free, cashed up and laughing, but it is possible in 2022. Happy cheapskating, everyone. <laughs>